question is about the fourth subdivision of this Dhamma Nupasana Sati Padana, Pujanga Baba, Pujanga Division. Pujanga, as you all know, means enlightenment factors. Pujanga Pujan means enlightenment factors, and there are seven enlightenment factors that we have already mentioned. Sati Sambhujan, Mindfulness, Dhamma Vijaya Sambhujan, Investigation of the Dharma, then Vriya Sambhujan, Effort or Energy, then BD, Rapture, then Pasadi, Tranquility or, or Peace, Peacefulness, then the sixth is Samadhi or Concentration, and the seventh one is equanimity or upika. Upika or equanimity. There are seven enlightenment factors. As I often mention, due to short of time, we cannot go everything in detail. And to give you all a chance to ask questions, we usually give the discourses brief, briefly. So let us go through again since the question arises. Out of these seven Sambhojana, the first three, meaning Sati Sambhojana, Dhamma Vijaya Sambhojana, and Vijaya Sambhojana. These are the main and part we call Karaka factors. Karaka means working factors, the most active ones that we must make use of it in our meditation. The same thing Buddha explained, as I often said, Buddha, he has omniscient knowledge and he can read the inherent tendencies of the, his audience and he can uh, give the discourses in many ways as he's Dhammasami, he's the owner, he's the authority of his teaching Dhamma. So he used many tactics. And this Mahasati Patana Sutta in the introduction instruction, he said, Adabi Sambhajano Satima. In Bhujanga section, he said, Sati Sambhujan, Vidya Dhamma Vidya Sambhujan, Vidya Sambhujan. These three factors are same. And Master Patana Sutta is Adabi. Pari what Adabi means, ardently, means you must make strenuous effort or energy. And that is in Bhujanga section, it comes under Virya Sambhuja. And Master Patana Sutta he mentioned as Adabi. Then Samajano. Pari what Samajano means clear comprehension of the object you are observing. Ah, that is, in Bhujanga, it is Dhamma Vijaya Sambhujanga. Not just noting, only the beginner, just noting rising or falling and walking, left step, right step. This is just to train the meditator and the exercise to be familiar with the exercise. But later on, as you become familiar with the practice, you should investigate the Dharma. That's why now most of you, we are encouraging to investigate the Dharma so that you clearly comprehend your object. What do you mean by rising and falling? What do you mean by taking the steps as left step, right step, or when you know sitting and touch? So that is in Bhujanga, Buddha described as Dhamma Vijaya. Pariva Dhamma Vijaya means investigation of Dharma. In Bhujanga, he presented the Sati mindfulness first. In Mahasati Patana Sutta, he, he bring this effort first. You, first you must make effort to be mindful for what? You make effort to be mindful so that you clearly comprehend your object. Uh, that's why I said, and put these, out of these seven enlightenment factors of Pujanga, the first three is real working factors. We must make use of that as working factor, as Buddha also 
emphasize in this Mahasati Padana Sauta as Ata Bhi Sangajano Satima. It's the same meaning. Only wording and the way Buddha gave instruction is different because the inherent nature of the audiences differ from place to place. That's why he used many tactics, but the same meaning. Now, let us go a little bit detail into these enlightenment writers. The first one, Sati Sampochenga, enlightenment writer of mindfulness, how to develop mindfulness. That's what you all are doing. You establish four foundations of mindfulness. You contemplate on four foundations of four objects. Kaya, Virana, Chaita, Dhamma, Kaya, Kaya, Nupasana, Sati, Patana. And sitting meditation, you either know rising, falling of the abdomen, or sitting, touching of the body. Or in walking meditation, right step, left step, lifting, putting down, lifting, moving, putting down. Or whatever you, the, the object arrives through six sense doors. All these are the four foundations of mindfulness that we have been explaining in detail. So by of practicing these four foundations of mindfulness, you are establishing or developing the factor of mindfulness, Sati Sambhojanga. And what do Dhamma Sambhojanga? How do you develop Dhamma Vijaya or Dhamma Investigation? I have often quoted the Buddha mentioned in the very first school, the Majjaka Bhavadana Sauta, and even in this Mahasati Bhavadana Sauta, in the fourth division, the Manupasana, the fifth subdivision, Sajja Baba, he mentioned. <coughs> the Malvijaya or investigation of Dhamma means you must understand the full noble truth. Understand theoretically as well as you must penetrate it with your own personal intuitive knowledge, inside knowledge. I have many times mentioned enlightenment or whatever you call it, attainment of jnana or wisdom means realization of the four noble truths. So in the first four noble truths, Buddha first lay out the gross sufferings as Jati Bhitoka, Jara Bhitoka, Pyati Bhitoka, Maranam Bhitoka, Abhiyehi Sambhyogo Toko, Bhiyehi Vaibhyogo Toko, Yampai Chan Alapati Dham Bhitoka. I have many times explained, and you all are familiar, this, this is mentioned in the Majjaka as well as this Mahasati Padana Sutta. The first truth is the noble truth of suffering. Jati Bhitoka, to be born, to be, to take rebirth is suffering. That we have many times is explained in detail. Jara Bhitoka, to decay, to get old, aging is suffering. Marana Bhitoka, of, of course, Sabi Bayandi Machu, you know, all beings are afraid of death, but we have to die. And that is suffering. Maranambi Toka. Abhi Isambiogo Toko. To come into association with things, either living or not, which is not conducive to our comfort and pleasantness, is suffering. And to be parted with living or not living things. The one we love, we cherish, is suffering. Piye hiwe piyo go toko. Yan pei san na la pati tambi toka. And life. To wish, to hanker after the things which we cannot get. Oh, for the things which we cherish, we cannot get. All these are suffering. And, and conclusion. As a brief statement, or to cover everything, in the first book of the Buddha says, Sankhiti na panchu para nakana toka. 
briefly speaking, this group of five, what we call a being or a person, that is constituted in five aggregates. Panchubara, pancha means five. Upadana means five aggregates of clinging. We cling to this five aggregates. Briefly, Nama and Rupa, if you elaborate five aggregates as I, my, and my Atta or my ego. And that, that is the cause of every suffering he has laid out. Jadi Bidoka, Jadabi Arise because of these five aggregates. He says, Sankhi Dena Banjubara Nakana Doka. Briefly speaking, these five aggregates of clinging are suffered. So what one must we investigate? The answer is out. Buddha said, Sankhiti and Nabhanjipara. To understand the, the first noble truth, noble truth of suffering, we must contemplate on these five aggregates. How? To clear comprehension, Samajanya. To be clearly understood what it meant by this Banjipara Naka. Briefly speaking, a person or a being is just made up of psychophysical complex, mental factor and rupa or material factor, mind and the matter. And if one wants to elaborate for better understanding, put a elaborated into five other cases, nama rupa, rupa is physical body or material phenomena. Nama is a mental phenomena. And mental phenomena is composed of one. Here he mentioned on one jita and three jita sika. So virana, sanya, sankara, vinyana. Virana, sanya, sankara is jita sika, mental factor. Vinyana is consciousness, jita. Atisa paramata dhamma, the ultimate realities with, and Abhidhamma Buddha mentioned one 89 or 121 jitas, then 52 jita sikas. That we don't need it in actual practice. If we can discern mental factors into four, three jita sikas, virana, sanya, sankhara, and one jita, vinyana, this full mental group, mental aggregate, and one rupa, and that become five aggregate. Because this is this being the cause of the noble truth of suffering. So we must, in our meditation, we must be able to identify in our practical meditation or exercises. And that is what is meant by Dhamma Vishya, investigation of Dhamma. So how do you verify these Nama and Rupa or five aggregates in your meditation? Regarding Rupa, the first aggregate. In Abhidhamma, if you have studied, some of you may have studied Abhidhamma. Buddha described 28 types of material phenomena. Here we don't need it practically. If you can identify Rupa with four gross elements, Mahabuddha, Patawi or Ad element, Apo or water element, Tejo or heat element, fire or wind element, uh, that is more than sufficient. For you must, at least, you must be able to identify Rupa with these four gross elements. Earth, water, fire, and wind. Characteristics, I have many times explained in detail, characteristics of earth. Earth is element of extension. Hardness, softness, heaviness, lightness is the characteristic of this Patavi Dhatu or Ad element. Then, good element of cohesion or trickling, fluidity is water element. Then, heat element and then element of motion. Why are that to win element? So these things you must be able to identify 
And sometimes you must investigate in your meditation. That is, you are developing Dhamma Vijaya Sambhojika. Do you understand you are noting rising, falling? Rising, falling means element of motion. You are verifying the why or tattoo or one element. So also in walking meditation, when you are noting the steps, either left step, right step, or lifting, putting down, lifting, moving, putting down. That is element of motion, why or tattoo. But here again, let me remind you, these four gross elements are there inseparable. They arise together and they cease together. Only in order of predominance we can point out or isolate one single element. But we cannot, in practical, we cannot isolate because they cannot exist. They are sahajata condition. They arise together. They must arise together. Ati, Bajaya and many foundational fighters, they exist together, they arise together, they pass away together. Only in order of when we say Patavita to other elements, other elements are to in proportion at that time or at the, on that occasion, Patavi is predominant. I often like an example, like if you see in the news headline that Singapore Prime Minister visited Malaysia, that doesn't mean that Singapore Prime Minister will come along. He'll be accompanied by the retinue of ministers, army generals, or media people. But he being the main figure, the new set language just see Singapore Prime Minister visited Malaysia. So, so when we say Patawi Dadu, Patawi is the main predominant element in that composition. But the others are also present. They cannot be separated. And when the tears roll down from the eye, or when you are sweating, or when you go to the toilet for urination, all these are apota to or water element, their cohesion property and trickling is a characteristic of this apota to or water element. And the next is heat element. The two is easily understand, but when you feel yourself or when you touch other things, sometimes you feel cool, sometimes you feel warm, sometimes you feel hot. These are all heat elements in different stages. Actually, they are the same phases, the, the different phases of the same element, like the two phases of the same coin. Heat and cool is the two extremes of this temperature. So this is a heat element. So that this is how you identify the material aggregate or the matter. And let us go to this nama or mental states. As I've mentioned in the Bhidama Buddha even enumerated the chitta or consciousness into 89 or 121 chitas and chitasika he classified into 52 types. Here in the five great gates we mention three chitasika mental fighters and one consciousness or chitta as a whole one. Because they arise together, this is I would take accompany these mental fighters as to accompany the guy called universal. They always accompany. The other take, the other mental fighters are occasionals. They accompany the mind from time to time. For one consciousness to complete its achievement of the function. These three must act together. That's why they are mentioned together as four mental fighters. Actually, three mental fighters and one mind. Three mental fighters are virana, feeling your sensation, translated as feeling your sensation, sanya, perception, sankara, volition. And these are three mental fighters. So, out of 52 jitasikas, this virana and 
Sanya is isolated as individual ones because they are important and they are, as I say, compulsory or universals. And the, re the remaining 50 Jitasika is represented by this Sankara because the other Jitasikas are derivatives of Sankara. So G3 are become mental fighters or Jitasika. And when they act together, they complete the achievement of knowing or awareness of the object, which we call Vijnana and Pali, and in English they translate as consciousness or the mind. I want to draw your attention about this Virana. Virana, for easy understanding, we usually translate as sensation or feeling. Actually, it begins with the sensorial impression. When an object is presented to our sense door, like when you see a sight or a visual object, the first it must impinge on the eye sensitivity and that what we call pasa, contact. And the feeling means that sensorial impression, the impression that is impinged on the sense sensitivity tissue of the corresponding door. And that is what is meant by Virana. That's why the consciousness cannot achieve its function without the presence of Virana. To do we translate as feeling or before feeling arise. There's impingement coming in contact, like the object presenting to the eye door. And when this is reflected in the, the sensitive tissue of the eye, we call Chakku Pasada, eye sensitivity. That contact is, starts with the Virana, sensorial impression. And that is the beginning. And this gives rise to feeling of but because the sanya, the next action is sanya or perception. Perception as it has experienced and registered in its memory, it interpret as a uh, light of what you, what, what is seen at that moment is either a human being or an animal or a diva or a male or a female, pretty or ugly, uh, so on. All these discriminations are by the sanya or perception. That's how they work. First, the object must impinge on the sensitive organ that is we call Dwara or the but we are endowed with. So regarding this Virana, how to investigate, we have already explained in the in our last talk. Virana, to put a, according to his uh, audience, he classified into many ways, but what we need to know in our practical meditation is mainly Dukha Virana, unpleasant sensation, because they are easy to be experienced. Then the rest, to, if we know three, is quite enough for practical meditation. Dukkha Virana is unpleasant sensation or feeling. Sukha Virana is pleasant or pleasurable sensation. And the third one is Adokama Sukha Virana, neither pleasant nor unpleasant sensation. And variously translated as Upekha Virana or neutral feeling or equanimous feeling, all these are same. But in practically, it is hard to detect or experience it because they are very subtle. Mostly what we can experience in practical exercise is just Dukkha Virana, unpleasant sensation like aches, pains, stiffness, numbness, etc. And when they are at the height of experience, it is give us aversion or dislike. Uh, that is why it is called Dukkha Virana. But when they gradually fade away or pass away, they become pleasant sensations that we usually miss to note it. Actually, we must recognize it when 
This dukkha with an unpleasant sensation pass away. Then this pleasant sensation is taking place in this place. When sometimes we don't even I think of these sensations they are because they are so subtle and equanimous and that is Atokama Sukha Vedana but this to me is subtle to know exactly. So if you can know or make a mental note of Dukha Vedana it's good for practical exercise. So Sanya of perception is when you are labeling making a label of the object you are noting with conventional terms as rising, falling, or left step, right step, lifting, putting down, and so on. These are sanya or perception. And the next mental factor is sankhara. Sankhara is commonly translated for easy understanding because it can easily be recognized as volition or intention, but it has much more wider meaning. And some, you may find in some books, they are translated as mental formations, meaning all other fighter, physical and mental activities arising from these motives or intentions that are included in the Sankara. Anyway, in your practice, if you can note or make a mental note or aware of the intentions and volition or motives and that is you are noting Sankara. So please make effort to catch these intentions in your practice because this is too important in the sense that because it helps you to develop the second insight, Pachya Brekhanyana the inside knowledge of cause and effect relationship. The first one, being able to identify mind and matter, is the first insight we call Nama Rupa Prajiranyana, the discriminating knowledge between mind and matter. And the second knowledge, by noting these intentions, one can realize the Pachya Parikhanyana, the second insight of cause and effect relationship. And these two are very important as they form the foundation for higher insight knowledge to arise. So they must be clearly experienced not only once or twice, if possible repeatedly, so that you be firmly established in these insights. Those who have participated in many retreats may have experience. Some teachers may even ask you to make a mental note and detail intentions. But even if you cannot, please be able to be aware of the major intentions like before you change from sitting to walking meditation, note the mind. Mind and the mind, the intention arise first. So intention to get up, intention to get up, and get up slowly, getting up, getting up. And don't immediately walk, then no standing, touchy. And when the intention to walk arise, please note again, and then need to walk, and then need to walk and walk. And when you reach the other end, when you stop standing, touching, and before you turn back, if the, if when the intention to turn arise, please catch that mind as intending to turn, intending to turn, and turn. And again, before walking, intending to walk and walk. Because the body itself cannot do anything. It is under the instruction of the mind that it is moving about. So you know the cause and all because the mind intends to get up, the body gets up, had to get up. Because the mind intends to walk, it has to walk. Because the mind intends to turn, the body has to turn. So this will be clearly perceived by paying more attention on these intentions. And that is, we have mentioned in one of our talks, Jula Sodapala. 
it can even close the door to a ram. It is so beneficial to completely understand by your own intuitive insight the cause and effect relations and of all phenomena. So also in the Manupasana, when you are noting the object that arises through six sense doors, as seeing, seeing, hearing, hearing, smelling, smelling, tasting, tasting, touching, touching, and thinking, thinking. The same principle apply and you can identify mind and matter, or even five case, or cause and effect, or even four number two. And these notes. And that is what is meant by Dhamma Vijaya or investigation of Dhamma. For instance, when you are noting the sight scene as seen, see, the visual object or the sight, and your eye organ is Rupa, the seen consciousness that arises Nama, just Nama and Rupa, there's no eye or no person involved in it. And because of this root visual object and the eye organ is a cause, then seeing consciousness or seeing arise. Seeing means it's by the mind. It's a mental, con- mental phenomena. See, that's why it is called seeing consciousness. And on a religious age, we just see seeing. Seeing means seeing consciousness. I mean, the, the mind is that sees, the eye is just instrumental. The object in the eye is rupa, and the seeing consciousness that arises now, the eye and the object is a cause, and the seeing consciousness that arises as a result, cause and effect right relationship. How will you investigate if I aggregate and see the root, the visual object or the sight and the eye organ is rupakana, it's a material phenomena, rupakana. And the sensorial impression or the moment we see the visual object we decide whether it is pleasant object or unpleasant object like very pretty or ugliness or frightful, etc. That is Virenakana. And identifying this object seen as something like male or female, a human or animal or whatever is Sanyakana. And making effort to see is Sankarakana. And these when complete, the f- f- function is complete, and the seeing consciousness arise is when yanakana. So by a case, you can identify, and the act of see when you know seeing, see. So, so when you're noting the sound as hearing, hearing, the sound and the ear is reflect on a physical phenomena, or material phenomena. And the moment you hear, you identify as pleasant sound, or unpleasant sound is Viranakana. And when you identify according to your own memory as a dog barking, a bird singing, or a clock chiming, or somebody playing music, that is Sanyakana. And the paying attention or making effort to hear or to listen is san, sankara khanda. And in technical term, we call manasikara, you, you focus the attention. So that is sankara khanda. And that completes the hearing process and hearing consciousness is achieved. And that is vinyana khanda. So that's how these five gates are verified and every note, echo of noting. And that is what we call Dhamma Vijaya Sambhojaka.